Hello and welcome to another chat. This one's going to be about Venezuela's Navy. Quite topical at the moment. You may have seen this map, the one on the left. This is the new official map of Venezuela. They recently held a referendum where they decided to annex half of neighbouring Guyana. Guyana is the section on the right of the Venezuelan or the east of the, the map. It is a very small, poor country, but recently oil has been discovered offshore, so it's quite wealthy. And whatever the motivations, Venezuela thinks it's a cool thing to just annex its neighbor. Whether they will invade, we don't know, but it's a very real possibility. Like my other chats, this is unscripted, unedited. I've prepared some materials. Let's get on with it. So Guyana, small small country as I mentioned, capital Georgetown. It's got a border with Venezuela, that red line there. You could expect perhaps that an invasion would simply be troops moving across the border and seizing land. That's actually not very likely. It's heavy jungle. There's no road infrastructure between two countries. So that would be very slow going. If there was a land invasion, it's been speculated it would go via Brazil, via the northern tip of Brazil. And even Brazil itself has um, you know, uh, mentioned this recently and is on alert to it. That may be, but actually you probably know that the easier or, or at least you know, comparatively easier way of moving around in the jungle is by, by river. And there are some very large, significant rivers in Guyana, and one of them uh, actually goes all the way to Venezuelan border. So you might expect any invasion to actually follow the rivers and riverine class, uh, boats. Also, amphibious operations along the coast potentially into the the main estuary. So that's why the, the Venezuelan Navy is particularly relevant to any future invasion that does actually come out of this. Let's talk about the Navy. They are a shadow of what they used to be. It used to be a very respectable mid-tier Navy, certainly for the size of the country. But in recent years, economic woes, political sanctions and so on, have taken a toll. The main or most capable vessels on paper are two Type 209 submarines supplied by Germany quite a few years ago. These would still be quite formidable, but actually neither of them have been in the water for quite a few years. And although they're officially listed as in service, you know, you can write them out of any near-term conflict for sure. Same can be said for the last of the Lupo class frigates. These used to be the backbone of the Venezuelan Navy, quite capable ships in their day. The last one, however, has been out of the water over a year and there's no sign of it going back. Is satellite imagery of that boat. You can see it on the left there. And that's a high resolution satellite image from a year ago. Much more recently, it's still there. This low resolution image on the on the right, but you can see the same ships still there. What do they have? Actually, they have some quite modern ships. Um, just before the sanctions 10, 15 years ago, they um, acquired some new ships from Italy. Uh, sorry, apologies, from Spain. These are quite modern, capable uh, craft. As the, um, the Corvettes were delivered, there was no anti-ship missile armament. But recently, they've had Chinese-supplied C-802, probably C-802A anti-ship missiles. These are generally equivalent to Harpoon Exocet, that type of thing. Quite capable, actually very long-ranged if you can get the target information. As far as I can tell from open source intelligence, only two of the three vessels have had that weapon system fitted. The third one's interesting because... Not only has it not had the missiles fitted, but it's actually had its gun armament downgraded. A um, ZU-23, which is a Soviet sort of era crude anti-aircraft gun. In fact, you can even see the wheels uh, or the uh, the mud guards for the wheels um, on the photo. They still uh, attach to it. That's replacing the Millennium gun, which is a 35 millimeter close-in weapon system. Actually a very sophisticated 
system, highly regarded. It's related in family terms to the Gepard uh, anti-aircraft tank that's doing very well for itself in Ukraine. Um, but this is more modern. Exactly why they've replaced that is we can only speculate that, but it certainly doesn't um, look good from a serviceability and their ability to maintain some of the most advanced elements of the uh, of these vessels. There were four of them, um, but shortly after they entered service, one of them uh, had an accident, grounded itself um, off Brazil. It's now back in Venezuela, but it hasn't been to sea for years and is essentially non-operational. So only three of them left. Venezuela also has some missile boats. Um, there's actually six fast attack craft. Three of them have anti-ship missiles fitted and three are just used as gunboats. The gunboats do have better um, cannons. Going by memory, these are uh, Vospers, so British design from the 1970s. The anti-ship missiles are Italian supplied automat, again, broadly equivalent to Exocet Harpoon. Quite old missiles wouldn't have been upgraded in years in Venezuelan service. Quite capable, but these are old boats. Much more recently, four fast attack craft have been delivered from Iran. These are PACAP 3 type. This is a design originating in North Korea, supplied to Iran, but then extensively mod modernized and, and produced locally in Iran. What's interesting is that Iran was going to supply these, deliver them in 2019. Um, at the time, myself and others observed this and reported it. I, I think this is from US Naval Institute News. I use this graphic. Um, seven or, or nine, I forget, but a number of the boats were on the deck. Only four have been observed in Venezuela, so possibly more of us due to be delivered. At the time, we did call it that they were going to be delivered to Venezuela. The ship then didn't. It turned and went to Russia instead and didn't go to Venezuela. Um, we can speculate when the when the ships were, sorry, the boats were delivered. But it's interesting that we called it right at the time because not everyone believed us. These boats armed with anti-ship missiles, the NASA um, ship missile. This is much smaller than Exocet or harpoon shorter range smaller warhead but still very decent um to be taken seriously um the advantage of course they're smaller so they can fit on smaller missile boats also interesting that the missile boats can probably carry torpedoes certainly in um iranian service they do um they can carry lightweight torpedoes uh derived from north korean types anti-ship torpedoes so that they wouldn't be targeting submarines even though they're lightweight torpedoes i haven't been able to confirm that the venezuelan ones are fitted with them but as in absence of um confirmation i'd say the default assumption is that they can be so the other warships we'd like to see are three offshore patrol vessels delivered from spain about the same time as the corvettes these are actually very very capable as far as Coast Guard vessels go. Technically, they're, they're operated by the Coast Guard, but think of them as warships. Again, you've got the Millennium gun at the back there, 76 millimeter gun at the front. There's only three in service. I think some of my watchers know where this is going. In 2020, there was a fourth boat. Um, here's this video snaps of it attempting to stop a cruise liner, the RCGS Resolute. It didn't go well. The cruise liner um, ended up ramming, whether intentionally or accidentally. Um, leave it to to speculate. the The warship, the cruise liner, isn't had a ice hardened bow. It's going down to Antarctica, that sort of thing. It didn't end well for the warship. This is the after photo for the cruise liner. We don't have an after photo for the the warship. You'd have to be a diver to see that it sunk literally. So that's the lesson. Don't attempt to stop an ice-hardened cruise liner. Exactly why the cruise liner didn't want to be sold, stopped, I mean, there were some accusations from the Venezuelan side that they're involved in some sort of coup plot or whatever. They're probably just worried about being seized. 
Venezuela's main way of acquiring warships in recent years is to seize civilian vessels and commission them into Navy. Here's two examples, a tanker and a general purpose sort of cargo transport ship, the Wanderer. That brings us on to um, the landing craft, the amphibious assault along the beach. It's actually quite capable. Um, Venezuela does practice this. It's a significant capability. You see, they can land tanks and so on. Just as an aside, in the top photo of an exercise, there is the Wanderer, that's boat that was seized, um, along with missile boats, other landing craft and so on. The main landing craft, we've got the Capana class LSTs, landing ship tank. These quite old, built in uh, South Korea, I think, going by memory, but generally capable vessels. Can land tanks, armored vehicles, that sort of thing. On the right, we've got the newer um, Lost Phrase class. Apologies for how I'm saying that. I don't even pretend to be able to speak Spanish. Um, but uh, you can tell what I'm talking about. I've described it as land ship tanking. Think of it that way. It's, it's more a general cargo ship that can land tanks and armored vehicles. Matt Riverine class, uh, sorry, uh, forces. I'm not going to go into detail here. They would be army as much as uh, Marines or whoever. They have some purpose-built vessels, but they could just take any boat along the river. Here you've got an interesting photo. I just put this photo in and I noticed, and this is nothing uh, submarine-related, I'm afraid, but most of the troops have the Russian AK-103 assault rifle. At least one guy in the middle there seems to have a QBZ um, 95B. This is a Chinese um, assault rifle. It's a short barrel version. Quite interesting that he has that weapon. I didn't know it had been supplied to Venezuela, to be honest. We should talk a little bit about the mini sub. This is a question mark, really. There is a very high capability, high quality uh, mini sub that was supplied to a Venezuelan government for oil um, uh, maintenance, that sort of thing say very capable it somehow ended up in recent years been associated with the navy exactly what it's been used for unsure um like I say top quality little um submersible it's, yeah we can only speculate what they could use it for in terms of the guyana's force no comparison they do not have a navy as such they have a coast guard police force it's got some some boats for river operations inshore they have three metal shark um, rigid inflatables. You can see that on the top. They're very good boats for what they are, but no match for a warship. I think there are things that Venezuela, sorry, that Guyana could do to counter Venezuela's naval advantages. Um, whether they do them, I doubt it somehow. The real defense would be intervention from other countries um, America or Brazil, possibly even UK. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I say it was unscripted, unedited shows. I know. Um, if you like it, please like, subscribe, share. Thank you.